Keith Buckmer Farms here. I just want to show you what I was working on today. Got my propagation house behind me here. I'm getting ready to reskin it. Because when I originally did it, I used little batten strips here. Put a screw every foot to hold the plastic down. But the problem was, is I cut, there we are, I cut the plastic. Only left about an inch or so on the sides here where it went in. I didn't leave any expansion at all. Over the season, it has actually shrunk down and when winter comes, it shrinks even more. So it has pulled loose all the screws on the main whole entire body of the greenhouse. So what I'm doing is putting up some channel lock and gonna use some wiggle wire and put a new piece of plastic on top. Let me show you how I do it. Now I ordered a bunch of uh, channel lock from, I believe it was DF Supply or Chain Link Supplier. That might not be completely right. It's just thin channel lock, C channel, whatever you want to call it. And I went through and I drilled holes every foot all the way down the track. And then at the end, one inch away from the end. These are six and a half foot pieces. So I've already got a couple pieces up on the propagation house and it turns out I need three per side that I'm gonna to need to cut. So I'll take you up top and start putting one on the other side. Start up at the peak. I take my piece. It's got a bunch of holes in it. Since it's six and a half foot wide, I've got two close to each other. So I'm gonna go over to the middle and then go one off this direction. So I've got one, two, three, and then one, two, three, four. So this fourth one right here is the middle. And I screw that directly down in my peak. Just using one and a quarter inch screws. And then I take and push down and bend it. Now I get a little crinkle right here, but I'll put a screw on this side and over here on this side, and then we'll take that crinkle out. Now as I go through, I'm just aligning it on the middle of the uh, two by four across the top on the one and a half inch edge. Then up here at the top, use a piece of channel locks. You can also use a uh, crescent wrench, an adjustable thumb wrench, or you can use the end of a box end wrench. And you just put it on one side and then down all the way at the bottom on the other. And bend it back slowly. You gotta work your way back and forth. Kind of get it to fold up until you can actually look down it and see that this is straight all the way down in both directions. You might get some burrs, and if you do, just take your pliers or what you have, just run it across and it'll ream it off. You come back around the other side, do the same thing. Because when you fold it in, when you fold it over, it takes this and actually pinches it in, so you've got to spread it back out. Again, I sight down both sides and make sure it's nice and straight. Knock off the burrs so my plastic doesn't catch on anything. And I'll continue working my way down both sides, screwing off and all the holes I already had pre-drilled about every foot until we get to the bottom. Since I have the top off my prop house, I think I'll take you inside and show you how I built it. 
is where we do all of our starch for all of our lettuce and all of our other crops. I heat it in the spring, open up the whole entire sidewall during the summer, and the winter close it back down and plant some overwintering crops in it. Let me take you inside and show you. Now the basic design is just an A-frame up to a peak on top, kind of like a gambrel roof. I got a door on the side, a header in between, and all my posts go down to ground plates. I'll go inside. I'm not changing out the sidewalls on this, only the uh, main cover on the top because that's what's given out on me. So, down here at the bottom, I got basically my wall right here. So I built this whole entire wall as one piece. It goes all the way up and across. This is 10 foot wide. So I've got my verticals at about three and a half feet ish. Down at the bottom, I used a piece of uh, rough cedar because it's in contact with the ground. You can see some microgreen trash. And my overwearing lettuce that does not look too good. Then I squared the base plate on the ground, which was the rough cedar. So I got my initial square on the ground. I dropped J bolts through, which you can see right there. You can see the nut on top. Dug. 18 inch deep piers underneath each of these that are 8 inches around 18 inches deep right where those J bolts are poured the concrete in just with the base plate on top I left enough to hook the actual wall on top of it afterwards to bolt it down all the way through I just drilled through after that and I went through and installed the walls and installed the roof pieces which are just toenail screwed through put in a ventilation fan just exhaust the outside through a dryer vent it's hooked to an ink bird cooling sensor so I can set the temperature and it'll automatically vent got some fans floating around And over here on this wall, this whole section right here, is actually a window. I have a wax cylinder that opens it due to temperature. You can buy those online as well. So that opens first, kicks on this fan, and then as it gets hotter, these fans come on, and as it gets hotter, this one kicks on. So there's about 5 degree differential Fahrenheit, that opens. That turns on a couple degrees afterwards. That turns on five degrees afterwards. And this one up here turns on five degrees after that. My new plan is after I get the new top on this, skinned all the way around, I'm gonna put in a ridge vent up here. I'm basically gonna build another triangle inside of this and attach that plastic on the wall there and the whole thing is just gonna fold out. So during the summertime, the whole thing will open up the exhaust. I can open up the end walls on both sides and go from there. I also put racks on both sides of this to stack all my trays on. You can see it's kind of a little bit of a mess in here right now. These hold a 1020 perfectly across like this. I also have an irrigation system set up in here where I got little micro heads and a main line that runs all the way around. The whole structure and the micro heads drop off at each post and goes down to my main irrigation system. Some power strip to control everything. Put everything else on timers or I put everything on uh, temperature sensors. This figured it'd be a good opportunity to show you the inside of this. I actually found the plans for this online. It's just basically a small A-frame greenhouse. It's 8 foot across here, 10 foot across here. Pretty simple. Let's get back to the top of it. 
to cut the aluminum channel lock, the best thing I found is a pair of tin snips. Just simply go in, snip one side, snip the other side, and you can bend it back and cut through the middle. Just as easy as that, you get a cut. Gets a little gnarly and maybe a little bent up. You can bend that out later with a pair of pliers. But using another end method, it just takes so much longer. And when you cut them with this, it actually bends these in so the burrs go down. I have my channel all the way around now. But at each of the junctions where two pieces go together or where they meet on the corners, I like to put some tape on to kind of oh protect the edges we have such strong south winds here and north winds during the winter that I like to uh, give it a little protection so when it's buffering around and rubbing on this point it just doesn't consistently sit there and go tap 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 and tear a hole in that section so what I do is I tear off a piece of tape lay it over another piece so it's two pieces thick and I tear it off Go from top to bottom so it's wrapped around both sides take a knife cut it push it on the inside now I want to put my channel or my wiggle wire in here it'll have a nice smooth surface to go up to now installing the wiggle wire is pretty cut and dry drape my plastic over the top pinned it with a little bit of wiggle wire here just use a full piece and left stuff hanging off here and here did all four corners all the way around it and that way I kind of have it held in place the winds starting to kick up just a little bit that should be much problem the biggest problem I have is as you can see my plastic short I thought I had enough plastic turns out I didn't so what I'm gonna do is use the plastic I took off and since this whole side over here is going to uh, roll up I guess now it's just gonna come off I'm just going to use a piece of the old plastic and go up, oh, about here somewhere on it. Get an overlap from the outside. That way, south wind might be able to blow in from underneath, but all the rain will shut off. North wind's coming from the other direction, so it's sealed off. I don't know. We'll figure it out later. I took it off, and i got to put it back on. So i got to use what i got to use. But I'm going to try to set this up on a time lapse. Watch you put the wiggle wire on. Alright, got my wiggle wire pulled all the way around, as you can see here on the north side, it's so clear you can barely even see it. Just took the wiggle wire anywhere I had a corner, I just bent it around the corner. Yeah, you really can't see that, oh well. Hope you guys like what you saw here today, thought it was 
useful. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe. Thank y'all. Have a good day.